everybody, Zach back again, and today I wanted to go over how I build my portfolio, what are my long-term hold positions that I don't really want to sell, unless of course it's for rebalancing purposes. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Well, my first position, and, and let me just go ahead and sort this by the uh, position ratio, and so here we are, all of my positions. And keep in mind, when I first entered into these, it was last March, I believe, they were all equally weighted. And as time has gone on, you can see some that have really outperformed the rest. Um, the, 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 most, uh, the biggest one would be SOXL, which is a 3x semiconductor uh, ETF. But anyways, I think I'm probably going to rebalance these, but I want to wait more than uh, 12 months so I don't get hit with the income tax because that would not be very nice. Really, what you should do is if you want to rebalance or even sell, switch around, wait until it's after 12 months, and then you only get hit with the capital gains. And at this point, I don't even really want to pay the capital gains right now, so I might not actually uh, do that. Maybe just some. But as you can see, I'm really heavy on the SOXL right now. My second favorite would be TQQQ. That's a 3x NASDAQ ETF. And I, that one actually just split, so it's gone up quite a lot in the past um, couple days. And oh, yeah, this unrealized PL. This is actually not accurate for TQQQ. For some reason, Webull did not op uh, update my cost basis for this one, although it did update my cost basis for the other ones. And since investing last March, I'm over 100%. I think I'm maybe 110, 115% right now. Um, but this is not going to reflect that because some of these, the, some of the positions I've sold and also some options, uh, positions that I had that I don't have anymore. This is just currently what I have right now. And also, if you've been following along, you know that I'm applying for a margin account right now on Weeble, so I can't open and close any positions. Um, so this is just what I'm going to be holding indefinitely really uh, and then some of them I'll sell off later but anyways let me continue so TQQQ I really like this one NASDAQ is tech heavy so this one performs really well and uh, that that is a 3x uh, like I said and the TECL this is a technology focused ETF that is also 3x this one has performed really well I've already done uh, over 100% since March, so and that's when I picked it up. started started picking it up in March, although I did I, I dollar averaged it um, over March, April, May, June, July actually. Um, so it's not not all I I didn't go all in in March, but anyways. And then U Dow that is the Dow Jones uh, 3x ETF. This one's done all right. Uh, nothing amazing. Dow was lagging for a while. Um, as well as the uh, S&P 500. But this is just a good old uh, normal ETF for Dow Jones. And then Tesla, of course, I have some Tesla. I, I mentioned before I have, I'm have currently holding 55 shares. I've been holding these for a while, bef since before the 5 to 1 split. And I plan on holding it more. Actually, I really would like to buy another 45 um, shares. I should have bought them before but before the split but anyways I want to buy another 45 right now so I can start selling the covered calls this has been a, a good one for me but it's been a good one for everybody this that's not a that's not complicated to make money in Tesla and then SPXL and U pro these are both 3x S&P 500 uh, ETFs and I just split these um, equally you can see almost equally between the two because at the time I saw that uh, on the five-year chart they were a little bit uh, different. One was better than the other one, so I just decided to split between these two. And I haven't sold it since. I kind of wish that I had just kept it in SPXL just for the simplicity of things. But uh, nevertheless, I have two S&P 500 ETFs that are 3x. And that's all for the 3x ones. So let me just go ahead and talk a little bit about these for a moment. The 3F, a lot of people say that these are riskier, or, or if you ever heard about the kangaroo, uh, if they go down, 
which they will go down, the market goes down, and if they go down, they're going to have to come up more than what they actually went down, which makes sense. So there is some, um, I guess you could call it decay on, on these, so you have to be careful and never get into a 3x ETF if you think the market is going to be sideways. Because the more it's going up and down, up and down, um, the, 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 the less it's going to be actually 3x to, um, I guess you could say, the underlying of what the ETF is, is about. So if it's the S&P 500 ETF, if S&P 500 is ju just the normal 1x ETF, if it's just trading sideways for a month, and that's not going to be a problem if you're holding S&P 500. But if you're holding a 3x and it's, it's literally traded sideways, just up and down, up and down, you're actually going to come out uh, negative. Um, you're going to lose a little bit on that because of the, the, the decay on that. Because like I said, if it goes down, it's going to need to come back up more. And if you guys want to uh, learn more about them, I would, I would suggest just researching, uh, do your own research and your homework before doing that. They are risk more risky than just the normal ETFs. Although, uh, for me, it worked out, and I. Uh, a lot of people say it's only good for short term, but that's just totally not true. Um, this is it's really going against what most people would give advice and what you're going to find online. But for me, it's worked out very well um, because what happened with the coronavirus lows in March? Well, obviously, I saw that that was a really good opportunity to move in. So. I wanted to diversify my portfolio. I diversified in the, the Dow Jones ETF, an S&P 500 ETF, and um, the NASDAQ ETF, technology sector, uh, focus sector ETF, and the semiconductor, which is semiconductors like AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, things like that. So, you know, those were the ones that, that I saw that were going to um, be safe, have a, a very good very, very, very good uh, diversification. Um, and so my portfolio basically looked like at that time, um, just across the, all across the board to Dow, S&P 500 and NASDAQ with a, uh, a focus and with a, a heavy weight, you could say on tech and semiconductors. And this worked out very well for me. Um, so I saw that the markets were down a lot. So what I did was I could have just gone in the normal ETFs and just held them until now. And then I, I wouldn't be anywhere close to, um, what I am right now because of the, uh, the 3X factor. So I wanted to go ahead and take a look at one of these charts. So just for example, on the, this is the best one. This one is just absolute fire and it has always been fire for me. And I would always recommend, um, the non 3X version would be S O X X instead of XOXL. But let's take a look at this for one second. So this was the coronavirus low. It went down to 53. Uh, my cost basis was actually 169 right here. So I'm just just way up. But I was buying around that time. I mean, I started buying before that. Um, but you know, I dollar cost averaged my way up. I uh, wanted to <laughs> dollar cost average a little bit down, but that just didn't work out very well. Yeah, but it's it's all good though. So totally, my uh, cost basis is 169 on this, and it's already 614. So as you can see, um, that that worked out really well. So I just don't see if because we all knew it isn't it wasn't just me. Everybody knew that the market was mm -hmm. was approaching lows that we haven't seen in a long time. It was bottoming out. Of course, mm -hmm. it can go lower, but that's why you got a dollar cost average down. And that's what I was planning on doing because I had a decent amount of cash on the sidelines. And I had, I, the reason why is because I sold some real estate. I was pre preparing for this. Uh, usually the, the, um, the economy is in cycles of 10 years, let's just say 10, 12 years or something like that. Uh, it crashes. So since the last crash was in 2008, everybody remembers. Um, so in 2008, 2018, I, I literally started cashing out some of my real estate. Um, not not so much. I sold one big property, and I, I bought some. I bought um, a couple smaller ones. But then with with a, a decent chunk of the cash, I started investing in the stocks in March. And of course, I was in crypto since 2011, um, so that always helped out. I literally, Bitcoin was like $200 or something like that when I first bought it. But that was a long time ago. 
so I had taken some of my crypto too and I started buying um, stocks in around March so you know it, it, we all had a feeling that this was going to be a once in a lifetime chance and of course it's not once in a lifetime it's probably once every 10 years and that's what I felt like and I was talking to some colleagues of mine and we were all agreeing and we started we started cashing up uh, around 2018 and I sat on the sidelines. I, of course, I was in, investing in crypto and, and whatnot, and then just basic real estate, some rental properties, and whatever. But you know, I was lucky enough where I could just sit and bide my time, wait for the next crash. And it happened in March, about March 2020. And I was actually in in China, in Shanghai, the time of the uh, when the pandemic started breaking out. Actually, it started breaking out here in January. So we were very aware what was what was what was going to happen. And we we kind of saw that coming, you know. But um, that that was just the posi the position I was in at that time. Uh, but anyways, what I wanted to show you just one last thing here about the three X. If people's still uh, like, oh, don't don't do that because it's not good. It's only good for a short time. Well, that's just I just don't totally don't agree with that. So uh, let me just show you the normal, the one uh, X version. So this graph along with the SOXL graph it is pretty similar um, you know there's not a major difference this one has gone up and that one has gone up well if we go ahead and change let me just go ahead and change this to the percentage so we can see um, and then let's make it right on the, the chart start right on the uh, coronavirus low in March now of course nobody would have gone all in uh, at the very very bottom but let's just do it for argument's sake so this one is about up 140 percent uh since the coronavirus low all right well that's not bad so 140 percent um let me just pull out a calculator so 140 times three if it's 3x it should be up 420 percent well let's look at it and it's not going to be because of the when it when it goes down all right, so right here, since the coronavirus coronavirus low, this one is up 680%. So it's actually outperformed, and that, that actually just gave me a surprise, but it is what it is. It's outperformed of what we would thought it was going to be. The X, SOXL has done very, very, very well. I This is my favorite my favorite one of course it's made the most money but we can take a, no a look at another one uh, especially like the Dow Jones one which Dow Jones is not tech heavy which I'm really really tech is the future and in innovation um, but we can go ahead and look at it we can go ahead and look at T triple Q uh, since the coronavirus lows is up what is that about 385 percent and then just normal uh, NASDAQ QQQ is up 81% so that gives you a much better um, look at it so about 81% times 3 so about 240% so as you can see the 3x ones have been um, actually a little bit more than 3x which is which is the uh, funny part but anyways so I really just don't agree with that but if there was a 3x ETF that's just going sideways like obviously don't buy that one yeah. if you really believe in the in this asset is going that, that's going to go up then there's no reason to not do a 3x if you believe what I believed in was the American economy in March was extremely low this is my chance I believe it's going to go up just like Buffett says Warren Buffett he says never bet against America which I I, I do believe that um, so it's it's going up from it's going up from there. So there's there's no reason not to do that. That's just my opinion. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable like that, and you could get some normal one X and some three X as well. For example, you could have a portion of QQQ, SPY, and DIA, and then also a percentage of uh, SPXL and T triple Q and U doubt. So you can get the best of both worlds. And one thing I would like to, one more thing, during those lows, uh, during the dips, uh, like right here, like that was that was pretty painful. Not gonna lie, because it goes up by three x, but goes down by three x. So you really have to have what they say, uh, diamond hands. But 
Um, it is what it is. All right, well, let me just go ahead and go back and show you some more. So those are my 3X ones. I really like it. I don't care what people say. It's worked for me, and I've made a decent amount of money. Um, let's see. This one I really like is O. I have 332 shares of O. It's realty income. I really like uh, investment properties, commercial real estate, um, anything like that. And this is really just kind of like my retirement fund. I'm just going to keep this until... I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm, I'm an old man and it's going to provide me good dividends so basically this one is this is about four and a half percent I think the last time I checked dividend per year and uh, I'm invested in in uh, rental properties and commercial real estate and this one is basically the same thing without the work of course it's less than you would make but you know that that's obvious obviously because you don't do any work but um, it's still down from coronavirus low, so this is still a good one. And this is um, this is a good dividend stock. They've never lowered the dividends. They've only raised it in the past, like since the 70s or something like that, like 50 years. So this one is very, very, very good to hold long term. It doesn't go up very much. As you can see, my cost basis, which is accurate, is $57. Uh, so it's only up a little bit. And, you know, because it's been trading pretty flat. But that doesn't matter because it's still giving a 4.5% uh, dividend and it's not growth and I don't have very much put in this but as I get older I'll be putting more and more in that uh, currently it's only three percent of my portfolio uh, but anyways and moving on to ARK the ARK invest uh, right now I only have ARKK and ARKQ uh, I plan on getting more uh, like the W and especially the G I've really been waiting for the G to dip and I was actually gonna buy it last week but then the weeble needs me to not trade for six business days so i'm getting it as soon as i can once i turn on the margin have a little bit of extra cash to go ahead and pick those up um in the meantime but uh these have been really good probably you've heard of the arc invest those are just hot they've gone up an incredible amount last year um since the coronavirus which wasn't even really a dip as you can see, it's up almost 200%. So this has been a really good one. Uh, would highly recommend this. It's all about the innovation. It's all about uh, just new companies that are going to just be game changers uh, in the future. It's managed by Kathy Woods. She is my idol. She literally does. Well, this, like this one, like I said, this one is up uh, for the year about, well, let's see, since the coronavirus, it's up about 275%. Um, for the year, it's up 100 and almost 190 now. It's that's crazy. I mean, you, you can just buy these and just hold it, and those are not even 3x. So I mean, you know, those are just really good. All arc. I'm really, really, really a fan. If you don't want to do anything, you just want to buy and hold. That's that's the way to go. But you still want to have growth. Um, thinking back to the the 3x ones, I might start diversifying out of that once. This bull run that we are we're on since the coronavirus, I might uh, divest from those a little bit and go into just the normal 1x ones, like like I've been talking about. But it really depends on the, um, just really depends on the time in the market. If I st see that there's still going to be bull uh, a bull market, then I don't really feel like there's any reason not to. If I feel like the market's going to be flat for a few months, then maybe it would be time to switch. And especially if it's going to go down and turn into a bear market, but that's not now. All right, and then the la uh, one of the last ones is THCX. This is a this is a 420 ETF. Um, I've been talking about it. It's actually down uh, since I bought it. I didn't buy it long ago, actually, very recently, last week, and it's down a little bit. That's all good. It, once I get my uh, account turned back on, <laughs> I'm gonna buy some more dollar average down. I only have 50 shares and that was my plan. Buy another 50, 100, 50, 200 totally. Something like that. Start selling um, the good old covered calls. And then here's Ford. I actually don't really want to buy any more Ford. These were just the free stocks that I got. And um, But I'm a believer in Ford because of the new electric Mustang and, and whatnot. But, and then also uh, Banco Santander. This is a Spanish bank. It's also a free stock that I got when I first opened we my Weeble account a long time ago. Um, and it's up 26%, although it's been down recently. It's not worth anything. It's worth like $3. If 
should I sell it or should I not? I don't know. Actually, I'm thinking about selling those just to make this more clean. But anyways, that's what I got for you guys today. Um, so my advice on building a a portfolio that you're going to hold long term. First of all, be ready to hold it for more than 12 months because you don't want to pay 20, 30% in income taxes if you could only pay 15% in capital gains taxes. So that's first of all. And if you don't sell it, you're not going to pay the taxes. So you always just don't be don't be silly about the taxes and stuff because obviously everybody has to pay their taxes, but be smart about it. Don't waste the money if you don't need to. Um, the government doesn't really need any more. Well, I guess they do need a lot more money actually, but, um, and then second of all, make sure it's diversified. I'm really a believer in the ETFs because they, it's a very easy for you to buy them. Um, and they're, they're like the index funds. So I'm really a believer in that. And if you can get them and then like, for example, the Dow, the NASDAQ and, um, what's it called? The S and P 500, just buy and keep those just keep those for a while. You know, it's actually the same thing pretty much that Dave Ramsey gives advice. It's just buy those index funds and just write them out. Because if you believe in America, if you believe in the U S economy, you know, that, that would probably be the smart thing to do. Um, it's not going to have as much growth. So if you want to get some growth, you get some innovation companies, uh, in small, in small, um, diversify in maybe like three to 5% per, uh, stock uh individual company i mean and then also if you would prefer you can go with the innovation etfs like arkk or the genomic one which is arkg um or the in internet one is arkw and um those would be really good to uh for your growth so i mean i think that's really how you would build a portfolio um also throw in some 3x don't be don't be too nervous about it if we're still in a bull market like there's nothing wrong with doing that um it's basically like you're having you're getting leverage without uh without being able to be margin called <laughs> so i think it's i think it's um i think it's a smart thing to do if if we're in a bull market anyways it's always worked for me but if you guys disagree please let me know in the comments below and please subscribe to my twitter um, I do live trades there. Remember guys, turn on the notifications on Twitter. You can get the notifications immediately when I make a trade, no matter if I open it, no matter if I close it, uh, you're going to know, and you're going to know the exact price. I, I post a screenshot from Weeble. If you guys want to follow along and trade with me, it's totally up to you. Or you can, you can just look at my trades and get some sort of idea. But if you would like, you can also open a Weeble, uh, link in the description. You're going to get four free stocks, and right now Weeble's doing a promotion that you have a chance to get a Facebook stock, which is like $275 or something like that. So, I mean, I haven't got one yet, but I've seen people online that have actually gotten a Facebook stock. Uh, the most of the stocks I get are valued around $8 to $11, $12. So, if you get four, I mean, you're, you're literally making... 40% uh, ROI on your initial $100 deposit because keep in mind you actually have to deposit some money in there. But I think that's no problem for most of you guys. It's 100 bucks, and uh, hopefully you can follow along with me uh, because we're making some money over here. And I've started at the beginning of uh, in March actually uh, for this stock account, and I'm already up 110%, 115%, something like that. And uh, we're almost to a million. So I hope you guys are subbed to my. Uh, my website, my blog, ProStockAdvice.com. Also put a link in the description to the blog. Um, put your email address in there and you can get notifications when there's a new analysis out for the journey to a million dollars. And then lastly, I hope you guys go ahead and subscribe to my new YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or if you want me to do any specific videos, then please leave a comment and uh, hit the like button to help the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.